Hey, Core Math 1 students. I'm here with my cat, Widget. If you can hear her purring, raise your hand. I'm kidding. Uh, you might hear her purring, though, or at least getting in the way of what I'm doing. So here we are on S9A3. We are continuing our work with unit analysis. Some of these problems have just a couple of extra steps based on the same types of unit conversions and dimensional analysis that we have been doing. So here on problem number one, it says for a science experiment, Bobby dissolved 1.0 kilogram of salt in 3.0 liters of water. For a different experiment, Sally dissolved 2.0 pounds of salt in 7.0 pints of water. Which person made a more concentrated salt solution? And we do have to prove our answer. So that means showing our work. And then it gives us the information that one liter is about 2.11 pints, while one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. So the situation with Bobby is that he has one kilogram of salt in three liters of water. The thing about Sally's situation is that she has two pounds of salt in seven pints of water. So not only do we have different weights, one kilogram versus two pounds, but we also have different amounts of fluid. We have the three liters versus the seven pints. So what happens here is that we need to convert Bobby's units into the same units as Sally. So our goal is to take kilograms per liter and turn that into pounds over pints. So that's our goal. So we're going to have to do a couple of steps to make this happen. So let's start by setting up our problem with the same types of fractions and um, the setup that we've used in the past. So here our first fraction has our blank kilograms per liter. Then we have multiplied by one fraction of a conversion factor, multiplied by another fraction conversion factor. And it's equal to what we want to get, which is pounds per pint. So once again, we're taking Bobby's numbers and turning it into pounds per pint. So he dissolved one kilogram in three liters of water. So we've got one on top with three on bottom. So our first fraction, we need to convert kilograms into pounds. So currently kilograms is on the top, so we would have to put kilograms on the bottom and pounds on top. Notice that both of those are units of weight. And then of course they tell us in the information that one pound, excuse me, one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. So we'll fill that in. Our next fraction, our next conversion factor. Okay, so we've gotten rid of kilograms. We've taken care of that. We're gonna have pounds on top. We need to reach pints on the bottom. So we need to get rid of liters. Liters is currently on the bottom. So in this conversion factor, we'll put liters on top and pint will be on the bottom. Notice that both of those labels are units of fluid volume. And they tell us that one liter is about 2.11 pints. So by doing this, liters will cancel out and we will have pounds per pint left after we complete our calculations. So that's where the calculator comes in. So we do need to multiply everything that's across the top. 1 times 2.2 times 1. So that's a total of 2.2 pounds. And we need to multiply everything across the bottom. 3 times 1 times 2.11. Okay, so if I grab the calculator and take 3 times 2.11, I get 6.33. 6.33. And that was on the bottom. But we don't want to leave our answer like this. What we need is to get a number of pounds per one pint so that we can compare uh, with Sally. All right, so let's do one more calculation of taking 2.2 divided by 6.33. So 2.2 2 divided by 6.33. And Bobby's number comes out to 0.35, if we round to the nearest hundredth, pounds per.
per one pint. So that's Bobby. But Sally's information wasn't based on pounds per a single pint. She had two pounds per seven, per seven pints. So we also need to take her number and divide as well. So it's in the same labels, and that's what's critical to be able to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges here. So for Sally's situation, 2 divided by 7 is 0.29 if we round to the nearest hundredth, and that's pounds per pint. So we need to finish up and answer this problem by saying, all right, which person made the more concentrated salt solution? Well, based on these numbers, and since we're comparing it to a single pint, Bobby put 0.35 pounds into a single pint, while Sally only put 0.29 pounds into a pint. So what this tells me is that Bobby has the most concentrated solution because he put more in per unit of volume. That's the comparison that we are doing. So Bobby had the most concentrated salt solution. Let's do another problem together. Number two, during a cycling event for charity, Amanda traveled 105 kilometers in 4.2 hours, and Brenda traveled at a rate of 0.2 miles per minute. Which girl traveled faster? Well, once again, we have different labels. Amanda has kilometers in hours, while Brenda has miles per minute. So by default, I will always take the first person's units and turn them into the second person's units. So Amanda was in kilometers per hour. Our ultimate goal is to have it match Brenda, who had miles per minute. So watch out for the difference between the label in miles and the label in minutes. So what's happening in the middle there? Well. We have to use one conversion factor to get away from kilometers and into miles. And then we need a second conversion factor to get away from hours and into minutes. So that's what our setup will look like. So if we begin filling a couple things out, Amanda traveled 105 kilometers in 4.2 hours. So those would be our starting numbers. Now we can work towards setting up the conversion factors, the fractions. So if we start with the kilometer piece, kilometers was on top. So now to get it to cancel out, we need kilometers on bottom. And we want miles to be our ultimate distance measure. So miles goes on top. Notice that both of those are a unit of distance. That's critical. And they tell us that one mile is about 1.61 kilometers. Our next conversion factor we need to get hours to cancel. So to get rid of hours, and with hours being on the bottom currently, hours will go on top. And the unit that we want is minutes. So that will go on the bottom, since that's where the time is placed in our final fraction. And so we just need to write out the correct amount for hours and minutes that are equal to each other. How many minutes are in one hour? Well, there are 60 minutes in one hour, so that's what we would put down in the denominator. Next up, we need to do some calculations, multiplying on the top by all of those three values. 105 times 1 times 1 is simply 105. And in the denominator, we need to do the same thing, taking 4.2 times the 1.61 times the 60. So 4.2 times the 1.61 times 60. That gives us a total of 405.72, 405.72. And we can't quit there because we want to compare it with Brenda's rate, which was in miles per a single minute. So let's go back to the calculator and let's take the 105 divided by the 405.72. So if we round to the nearest hundredth, that would be 0.26. 0.26, and that's miles per minute for Amanda. Meanwhile, Brenda's number 
she had a rate of 0.2 miles per minute. This time it's already per a single minute here. So now we can compare which girl traveled faster. Well, it's the person with the higher number per a single minute or the longest distance per a single minute. So that would definitely be Amanda who traveled 0.26 miles per minute, which is greater than 0.2. Using these steps of setup and getting things to cancel, complete the remaining problems on this worksheet. If you get stuck, ask Mrs. Peffers. She not only has an answer key, but she can also explain this. Good luck out there.